Good morning farmers. Welcome to part six of the Winter Maze Challenge with Sitco. My name is Lausi Mwamba. A couple of weeks ago, um, Sitco posted on Facebook that it was possible to make 150,000 kwacha in a hectare of maize. I stepped up and challenged Sitco and asked them to go on the journey with me to be able to see how we can achieve this. Sitco came forward and as you can see, we are in the field that we've been working on together with uh, Sidco. Today we are looking at the topic of crop management at tasseling stage. This is a very crucial part of the crop management because it also um, defines how the maize uh, yield is going to be. We will be joined by um, Audrey Dutoy, who is the commercial man sales manager of Sidco, and she is going to take us through the process of um, the tassel management on a crop that has reached that stage. So as earlier indicated, um, we, we are joined today by Audrey Dutoy, who has come in to come and help us um, look at the crop management at tasseling stage. Audrey, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mrs. Mwamba. It's a privilege to be here. It really is. It's been so interesting to see the four stages of your crop. I appreciate you inviting me in. Yeah, we're very happy. I mean, uh, Sitco has been very responsive and for us, it just makes us feel that you do listen to the farmers and you're definitely doing something about this. And we hope that the series that we're recording right now will change people's lives because then they are able to go back and learn more about crop management. So um, today we're talking about tasseling. In, in the crops. I didn't even know that there was any kind of management that needed to be done when the crop is tasseling. Could you just give us like um, an idea of exactly what we need to do when a crop reaches that stage, please? So, Mrs. Mamba, um, as you can see, your, your tassels are just starting to come through yes. and the silks are just popping out. Yeah. So this is the stage of the crop where, um, where Climate is very important in a winter maize crop and where pest and disease management is very important. So you have hit it perfectly Thank because you. for pollination to take place, the, the nighttime temperatures must be above 10 degrees, mm -hmm. which is why you have planted in, in uh, June and July so that by the time it goes into tassel, your nighttime temperatures are already rising. Yeah. And you can see how, how lush and beautiful your whole crop is now. It's really responding to the increase in temperatures. So that's perfect. If, you, if it's very cold mm -hmm. at pollination, that's when you get those cobs that have one, 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 one pips because okay. the, yeah. the pollen and the silts don't synchronize properly. Okay. okay so. Number one, it's not that you can actually control the nighttime temperatures. Obviously, you control your planting date. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've done that perfectly. That's good to see. Then the next issue that sometimes happens with, um, at cobbing is that the fall armyworms start to come into the cob. Now, it's not so... Um, it's not so evident in winter. It's far worse in summer because fall armyworm love heat. Mm. So what you might find is you might find this crop is cleaner, but this crop that we're standing in now, when it gets to tassel, you might find that you have an increase in fall armyworm okay. pressure. Okay. okay. So um, the issue is to be to be diligent in your scouting. So Audrey, we, where we're standing, we have four different stages of the crop. We have four different planting dates, uh, which is 6th June, 21st June, 1st July, and the 11th of uh, July. And for us, I think it's, it's been very helpful because we can see the crops at different stages. The first crop that we're standing in right now is uh, had its final uh, fertilizer uh, infusion last Friday. So could you just give us kind of an overview of how the crop behaves, especially when the temperatures are lower and when the temperatures are higher and where we're at now? Because we've seen that uh, this crop is really growing fast. Yeah. The last time we were, we were here in the field and today, it's like the crop has gone twice 
the size. Could you just uh, give a little bit of, an, of uh, information around that for our farmers so that they can understand exactly what is happening and why planting dates are important? Okay, great. So, uh, Mrs. Mwamba, I can see here from the, the width of the leaves that these roots now are in full swing. Okay. And that's because we, because the temperatures have increased. Always from the beginning of August, mm -hmm. we see that increase in, in daytime temperature. And maize loves heat. Yeah. Not heat like we had last year, but <laughs> maize generally we loves heat. We don't have that this year, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see now, you can see this, it's slightly pale mm -hmm. on the inside. Yeah. Okay. But that, that is because it's telling you it's growing. Yeah, okay. These, and these leaves, as those roots continue to suck that fertilizer that you put in last week, um, these leaves will become dark like these leaves. Okay. This is a beautiful crop. Thank you. Um, and I'm sure that when you first planted it, it was looking slow and a little bit stunted. It yeah. wasn't enjoying the July temperatures. Yes, I mean, I, w I was worried. I'm like, oh, there goes our challenge, but <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> yeah, so, so the, whole, the whole issue about planting really what you would consider out of season is mm -hmm. because that's when you get the higher prices. Yeah. But you have to do it carefully, um, otherwise you're not going to have the, the result. Okay. So that's, hence, um, we generally, we don't tend to plant um, maize in May mm. because in May our nighttime temperatures are very um, very cold or, or the, the crop will go through much colder nighttime temperatures mm. and maize doesn't like cold temperatures yeah, yeah. so you've got a crop now that's just coming into summer your first one's coming into tassel your temperatures are above 10 degrees at mm -hmm. night you've got a happy crop Okay. So yeah, okay. it's looking fantastic. So it is possible to have two crops in a year, isn't it? Because then you, you have the crop that plants maybe in October, is it when the first season starts? Do you start the season, the normal maize season that we have in Zambia? Does it start in October? Or? So it it's going to depend whether you've got irrigation or mm. not. Mm -hmm. Because obviously if you are planting dry land or what we call rain fed, yeah. you have to wait for the rain. Yeah. Okay. And so if you've got irrigation, you can start planting generally towards the end of October. Okay. And then you would be planting a late season variety, the yeah. elephant, yeah. so that it's only going to mature in uh, March, April. Okay. 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 And then the winter um, maize? So winter maize, I know it's been a big thing this year. Yeah. There's a difference between planting for green mealy production, okay. which is what you've done. Yeah compared to winter maize. Okay. The issue with winter maize is that um, you have to irrigate it the whole of winter, mm -hmm. just like you've irrigated now, mm -hmm. the whole of winter. Yeah. Uh, you are going to be selling a green mealy. Yes. You see them on the side of the road, all of the bus drivers. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. Yeah, so that now is much more economically beneficial Mm. than winter maize. Winter maize, um, does, because it's cold, it does not give the same yield as summer maize. Mm, so see. I'll give you an example. If you take the lion, uh, which is a six series medium, mm. if you plant that and you do it well in summertime, you can get over 10 tons. Okay? Wow. In winter, you will only get five, six tons. Mm, and you've put in the extra irrigation. Yeah. So it's an expensive crop to grow, mm. as you know, because you're doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's much more viable economically to sell it as green, green maize, maize than, than to sell it as grain maize. Mm. Okay. And yeah, and that's why everybody that really plants maize at this time is selling it for green millies. Okay, so we will be going um, towards the, the larger crop that has the, the tassels so that we can walk you through um, the process of uh, crop management at that time. Maybe we could just um, go closer there so that you can just give us an idea of what we need to do next. Excellent, thank you. Um, so Audrey, uh, this is our first crop 
we planted it on the 6th of June. And as you can see, it's very exciting. We already have cobs and we have tassels uh, and more and more of the crops every day are coming up with the, with the cobs and the tassels. So um, if you could really just walk us through on how we can manage to ensure that the yield is high with this crop. Okay, so Mrs. Mwamba, personally, I don't think you're going to have much of a problem with this crop because it's still cold. The most important thing, as we discussed, is going to be fall armyworm. Okay. And you will see fall armyworm. Uh, you need to scout for it, okay? So, yeah. and, and if, if, it, if it comes in, we, we would then have to work out, is it going to be economically viable to spray for it? But fall armyworm, when it comes in, it usually comes in as, once, once this is actually pollinated, this isn't quite pollinating yet. It's not um, throwing pollen. Um, so, but once it's pollinated and it's lively and sweet, especially because it's yellow, yeah. uh, the fall armyworm comes in and it generally comes in from the top and it goes inside and it starts to eat. Yeah. And it, it can create havoc, havoc yeah. absolute destruction. Yeah. And because now you've got a weak point in your cob, that's when rotting follows. Mm. So when you get fall armyworm into a, into a crop, if you get a lot of it, it's very important to come in with a chemical application. Okay. And quite often then we would, we would also add a fungal application against diplodia, mm. cob rot. Okay. Because that fall armyworm often is associated with cob rot. If you get no fall armyworm and you are very unlikely to get cob rot ever in mm. a green maize and okay. a green maize crop. So the armyworm okay. is what causes the, the cob rot? Well it's cob rot is a secondary infection. Okay. So it's because because the armyworm has now opened, because it comes in the top, it opens that whole top mm. section and then the fungi, the fungi which come in on the wind, they can settle and grow and start. And when they grow, the, the, the kernels rot. Oh, so is that why when you look at the rot, it kind of has a greenish look to it? Is that because of the fungus? Yes, that okay. is, yeah. There's, there's different rots. Some of them produce a white, some of them are greeny, some of them are pink. So yeah, um, it just depends which fungus actually lands. Are there any preventative measures, I mean, to, to ensure that uh, the armyworm doesn't come in? So what do we spray? Do we continue using the pesticides we're using now? Or is there something specific? So there are preventative measures. Yeah. And certainly the farmers that grow seed maize will always put on a spray at this stage. Not, not now, uh, just in a couple, probably 10 days time. Mm -hmm. They wait for it to pollinate okay and so what will happen because this is 608 these silks get very very long mm -hmm. actually like in that plant behind you there you can see that one also has not started pollinating yet but look at how long the silks are mm -hmm. um, that one's going to pollinate soon though you can see that your pollen yeah. sacs are are starting to pop out it'll probably start pollinating tomorrow um, I just have a question so we've, we've reached um, this level of crop and you can see that this is still healthy. How do we maintain this? What do we need to do as a preventative uh, for um, the army when coming to attack coming it again? So could you just give us um, you know, a run through of what we need to look out for in order for us to be able to manage the, the crop? Okay, so um, after, t after, after pollination, yeah. which is going to be in about 10 days time. Sure you would come in with a product mm -hmm. um, you it must be a systemic product okay uh, because what you want to do is you want you want to aim it at the cob but remember the fall army worm is going to come inside the cob mm -hmm. and especially if you've already got fall army worm inside the cob you need a systemic product that's going to go down the silks mm -hmm. and through the sheath into the cob area okay so to give you an idea um, you've probably already used a chemical that has 
an ingredient, imamectin, lufeniron, possibly. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good that's a good option. And then there's another one called chlorantipol, although that one tends to be used mostly by seed maize growers. Okay. Um, but the reality is that that for insecticides we prefer that farmers do them not preventatively but when they see a problem. Okay. Okay. I don't think you're going to have a problem on this crop because it's early planted. It's still cold. Fall armyworms not really about yet. Your final crops you may well have to put on. And it is the one time when I talk preventative insecticides is onto a silking um, onto a silking crop. Okay. But it must already have been pollinated. Okay. Okay. So it's it's quite a tricky you want it after pollination, but you don't want to put it onto dead dry silks because mm. dead dry silks are dead and dry. Yeah. You want them to still be be green yes. and relatively fresh. They probably won't be green. They actually want after silking they turn to sort of a pinky colour. Yeah. So they go pink and then they go purple. When they're purple it's they they're dying already mm -hmm. okay so yeah it's quite a quite a tricky balance you need to be wide awake <laughs> yeah so that's why scouting is uh, is very important very important I think most farmers are struggling especially with the army worm uh you they don't really know what to do or when to stop or when to do it and and i think this is a, an important aspect for our yields uh, most of the time because you'll find that the crop is looking beautiful but when you open it, mm. it's it's yes. rot. It's got rot inside, and and I think that's a a big thing for most farmers. So thank you very much for, for highlighting that for us. Yeah. So the one thing that I, that you you might have to also consider for your later crops. Mm -hmm. um, again, I don't think it's going to affect you now. Is that if you have got fall armyworm in your crops, mm -hmm. then also add in the fungicide. Okay. To control the potential cob rot okay okay, okay. yeah because you know what it's like you're selling a cob and everyone wants an, a nice cob of course they yeah. don't want a cob that's full of rot at yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the tip <laughs> and that rot does come in when you get the full army worm okay I see. okay yeah so yeah but we'll 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 look at that again um as these later crops come are coming up are, yeah. are coming yeah. up yeah okay, okay no, i mean it's good for for the practice because then you you get to understand exactly what needs to be um what needs to be done in this case. Yes. So thank what's, you very much. And I'm sure the you? farmers are going to be very happy <laughs> to hear all this information that we actually didn't really quite know. So thank you. Great. Excellent. So Mrs. Mamba, what I wanted to show you is this is your second crop planted on the 21st, 21st of June. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to highlight to you the thickness of your stems here. You can see they're still quite thin. Mm -hmm. These ones behind, it's because they, they're, they're thinner because they're not getting as much sunshine. They've been growing through the whole June as a cold month. Yeah. So, uh, um, and even July, the beginning of July is cold. So, so you've got quite thin stems here. Mm -hmm. Then I wanted to focus on that, on your oldest crop here, planted on June the 6th. So we have two weeks. Yeah. 14 days difference and look at your stems yeah that is such a good indicator okay. of a crop that has been fed nutritionally correctly mm -hmm. this is a happy plant so yeah we're looking forward in two weeks that crop is going to look like this crop so we, in fact, we, shouldn't, might we shouldn't worry too much about it no 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 okay. you don't need to worry at all Okay. It's, it might even be looking happier because it's getting more sunshine yeah. than this crop At, the, at that had. stage, okay. Yeah, okay, because cool. of the slightly later planting. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so yeah, you can see um, your, your leaves are fully green. Mm -hmm. There's no nutrient deficiencies here. And you've got a, you've got a solid stem here. So you, you've got a very nice plant here. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Great. Thank you.